Hello and welcome. Let me move this a little forward so you guys can hear. Hi, I'm Philly Philly. Welcome to my kitchen. And tonight is a weekday meal stream. And I apologize for the lateness in coming on, but um, was encountering a ton of issues with the tech. So I will have to say, you know, this is just really me making this all happen as far as tech wise. And my son, of course, as you know, helped me. Um, I see a couple of these uh, channels that have like this crew and I'm like, oh my gosh, wouldn't that be nice? But it just happens sometimes. Sometimes everything goes along seamlessly and other times tech doesn't work. So I'll tell you about it as I'm getting some cheese ready because today I'm sharing with you two versions of Cacio Pepe. Um, the first one, let me start doing the cheese because the cheese is our star in this and it's uh, Pecorino Romano cheese, and this is a time you actually don't want to skimp. You want to get, um, if possible, the authentic Pecorino Romano because it really is the star of it. There's very few ingredients in this dish. It's the cheese, pasta, and the pepper. So since that's as simple as it's going to be, and this is a really quick dish, you want those parts to shine. So, you know, get the best pasta you can get, get the best uh, pepper you can get and get the best cheese you can get and then you will be happy. So um, I'm going to chat a little bit. i uh, take a little sip of wine. Cheers to you all. It is Thursday. It is Friday Eve, right? It's the day before Friday and the weekend is just around the corner. So if you're joining, um, please pop in the chat and say hello. I love chatting. Hubs will be joining us in a little bit. Um, yeah, but I love chatting with those that are here. And actually, I feel like that helps me calm down. So don't be afraid to come say hi, and you don't have to chat the whole time, but I do love knowing who's joining. So let me take a little sip. Oh, that's nice. It's kind of like, I forget the name of that one, but it's a Sauvignon Blanc kind of style. And I think it was, I, for, I think it was from South America. Anyway, um, so I'm gonna start getting my Pecorino grated. Now, you will need a lot of, of the Pecorino and you want, um, one of the things that will ensure success with this dish is you want it grated fine. So you could use either this pebbly fine grater on a box grater, but um, I have a microplane, which is kind of my preference. And so I'm gonna use that, but I just wanted to show you this in case you don't have a microplane, you could use either. So you could, you really want it to be very small because you really want it to melt into the sauce and become one with it. So I will chat while I'm grating. Um, but one of the things, oh, I have a chunk there, so I wanna make sure that chunk, there we go. One of the things I wanted to share with you though uh, was the fact that um, I'm gonna be sharing with you two recipes. I came across the recipe that I'll first show you kind of by accident. Um, as many of you know, I'm obsessed with all things food and cooking. You know, I'm a home taught, home cook, you know, kind of have cooked since I was quite a bit younger. And then, you know, really cooked a lot through, um, for myself when I was on my own. And then in my marriage, I uh, really enjoyed cooking and I enjoyed cooking for my kids. Although I will tell you when kids go through fussy phases, oh my goodness, that's frustrating if you enjoy cooking. Because what's worse is when you all of a sudden see them not wanting to eat all the stuff you're making them. Let me see, vitamin G. Oh, Greg, wonderful. Thank you for joining. So I was just chit-chatting about how I first came upon this recipe. So thank you for joining the stream, Greg. And I was actually watching one of the many cooking shows or kind of um, not even necessarily how-to cooking shows, but stories about cooking, about cuisines. And the one that I was watching, um, the fellow was visiting in Italy and he, they were talking about cacio e pepe. And he was at some of the Italian restaurants. And there was one in particular that I, I vividly remember. And he was learning from the chef there how they make cacio e pepe because it's such a simple dish. And it's also a dish that must be eaten right away because it seizes up pretty quick. So what's wonderful about it is it's quick and easy. Um, but it isn't, I will say it isn't great for a crowd. Now, down below, you'll see a link to the second way I'm going to make it. Um, I thought I'd try something new because... I'm kind of a, <laughs> I'm a crazy foodie in that. I always love like thinking, is there a better way I can do it? And I know there's many different methods for cacio e pepe. So I'm always open to trying some new methods. Ah, 
Donnie Thunders, welcome. So good, so good to join you. I was talking about Cache Pepe. I didn't know if either of you, Greg or um, Johnny, if you guys either uh, cook Cache Pepe. I wasn't sure. So you'll have to let me know. But on the show, he was in an Italian restaurant. And so the first method is literally what I wrote down when I was watching the show. And I thought, well, I'm going to try this. That's kind of how I've always looked at cooking. I see something good and I'm like, I'm gonna try this. And then I sometimes fall on my face, and other times it's wonderful, and oftentimes it's just a matter of tweaking until you get something right. Um, and so that'll be the first method that I'll show you. But then as I was exploring methods, because I always love doing that, on the link below, there's a man named Steven, and I can't remember his last name, but he has a great YouTube channel called Not, like not Your Average Cooking Channel, or I can't remember quite how it goes, but it's all below. I, I put it below and he's wonderful. He's fun to watch and he shows three different methods. So I'm trying one of his methods and I'm gonna have hubs and I taste both results and see which one we prefer. So the way I've been doing it for years and the way he showed, let me see. You have before. And so um, Chris, you'll have to let me know if this is the way you've done it um, or if you've done it a different method. And I'll be doing two methods. And you have not, aha. Well, you should because this is super simple. So one of the first things you need to do is you kind of got to have your ingredients all set because things are going to happen pretty quick. I actually already started my water boiling. It's already come to its first boil. And so I just need to, um, you know, turn it back on and get the pasta in there. So I'm going to need about two cups of pecorino. So I'm just gonna, I just, you know, you can always have, you can never have too much cheese, right? Um, and then what I do is I have never toasted my pepper. So Stephen talks about the importance of toasting the pepper before you grind it, and I've never done that. So I'm just gonna do how I've always done, because you know, maybe you're a cook, um, and I'm actually thinking not so much with Greg and Chris, because you guys pull it out wonderfully, but I'm thinking maybe you're a cook that just is like, you know what, you gotta keep it simple for me, because I'm not gonna try it if it gets too complicated. And so this first way is really simple and it really gives a great result. The main thing you have to make sure you don't do is use the cheese that has those fillers in it because it won't melt properly. And you do want your, your um, dish to have everything melting properly. So, and again, you could use this, a box grater. I've always used my microplane. Um, I know Stephen on the other video talks about this being the most important way, but I've always had good results from the microplane, so that's what I'm gonna do. So, in any event, I've already gotten my pepper for my method ready. So, what I've done before, I've had pepper grinders, and I've just ground, 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 until I got a, a bunch. My grinder currently that I have, that I love, it's an electric one, but what I don't like, is it takes forever. <laughs> this is gonna sound so first world problems. But like you're pushing the button forever, I actually would rather just have a regular grinder because I could get more out, like more quantity out quicker doing it myself. So I used um, my mortar and pestle. And let me kind of show you how this looks. By the way, the tech issue I ran into is I have a second camera that I use and it's not working. So isn't that lovely? But what are you gonna do, right? So I'll do my best to show you my method. So let me just kind of, let me see if I can get this up closer. So you can see that it's it's kind of fine, it's finely and coarsely. Like it's not it's not so coarse that you're going to be doing um, a cracked black pepper steak where you have those big pieces of peppercorn, but you do want some texture. Texture is good, but you do want it fine too because it also gives that flavor. And you're gonna need about a teaspoon, and I can always add more, but for the portions I'm gonna be doing, they'll be about a teaspoon. The other thing is that's important is your pasta. So as many of you know, I often cook with um, de, de, de Checo, de Checo, I never know how they say it, which is an excellent pasta that you can find, at least I can find in my stores. It's a great Italian pasta, it's from Italy. It's because of the way um, it's extruded and the way it's created. It, it has like a great texture that really holds on to sauce and sticks together when you cook it. I mean, not, not sticks with each other, but it doesn't fall apart, which is wonderful. But this is some that I used when I made the pasta aglio olio. 
Um, and it was from a nearby market, and this is an excellent bucatini. And if those of you that follow me know I love bucatini. So I'm gonna use the bucatini. I'm gonna make two batches. One batch, again, the way I've always done it, and the other batch, the way Stephen in the video below talks about it. So let me see. I have the pepper cannon mill. Ooh, oh, <laughs> so you had me. Chris, you had me. I was like, oh, it, it grinds like a beast. I was like, yes, and then I saw the 200. Oh, well, that is, that's wonderful. Um, that is a commitment, though, for sure. I will also say the other thing you can do is if you have one of those, and they're not expensive, one of those grinders that you use for coffee, if you keep one dedicated just to spices, that could be a possibility too. And they're not that expensive. I mean, I think we got ours, I mean, it's been a while, for maybe $15, $20, and that would be an easy way to get a lot of pepper ground. So there's a couple of different ways. But honestly, when you have even just a normal grinder, it just doesn't take that long. I just my automatic one. It doesn't seem as much as it's nice to just press the button and have it do its business. It doesn't cook. It doesn't cook. It doesn't grind a lot quickly, if that makes sense. So I've got my cheese. I've got my pepper. Now I got to get my pasta going. So I'm going to. Yep. I saw that steam. So this is what I'm really sad about. Because this is the camera that was supposed to work, and this was going to show the technique. Now, I will tell you, I don't love this pan for doing this single serving, um, because usually, I mean, I'll just be honest, usually I wasn't doing a single serving because I was usually feeding my family of four, so I was doing two servings at a time, which is a little bit tougher and definitely involves an arm workout. But, you know, I just had to feed my family. So, so we were doing what, what it took. Um, but for, I wish this was a little different shape. Um, but it's kind of what's going to be the best, you know, with what I've got. And this will be for a single serving. So I've got my water. I'm just going to bring it up. I'm going to divide this pasta that I have here into two parts so I can use it for the two different methods. My method, based upon the show, um, had the chef taking some of the pasta water and he added the pepper to the pasta water and then he added some butter. And that is what's different than Stevens below. He doesn't add any butter. So I was super intrigued because, you know, I don't use copious amounts of butter every day. Like I, I think, you know, moderation is key for everything. However, butter does give flavor. And I thought it was, a, and he claims that, and I don't mean claims, that sounds, that gives the wrong tone. He says that that's another authentic way. And what I believe, because I see what happens in our country, is I think there's lots of authentic way. I think there's lots of ways they do it in Italy, right? Um, and so the one restaurant that the person that was doing the show was visiting happened to add some butter, but I'm anxious to try Stephen's way to see if I miss the butter, you know? Um, so anyway, so I got these divided in two. So they'll be ready to go. And again, this is a... Um, Bucatini. So it has that little hole in the middle, Oops. which I love. It just has great texture. There's lot, anything long. I mean, you really could use any pasta for it, but I think the long pastas just give you great texture. Oh, it's a birthday present. Oh, I like those kind of birthday presents. In fact, one of the things that I'm asking for for my birthday is I want to get um, one of those, you know, heating elements, but is it, what's it called? The, the one is not convection. It's the one that, like, as soon as, conduction. It's a conduction element so that it gets cool right away. Uh, so that's that's kind of what I'm hoping to get because then I won't have to worry about my camera issues. I could do the cooking right here. I still would love to be able to have the camera because sometimes it's good to have the overhead shot, but um, but I would love to also not have my back turned. I That's one of the things I don't like if I'm streaming and have my back turned. All right, so let's check. I think our pasta is ready. I meant our water. So let me move the lid. I'm going to, now, pecorino is very salty, so I would usually say put copious amounts of salt in here for the water. I'm going to salt it, but I'm not going to go crazy because I'm going to be adding a lot of salt with that cheese. Okay, and then we're going to drop our pasta in. And I forgot to check. I forget how much this one, because this one's pretty thick. This one is 10 to 12 minutes. All right. 
You just get it going. Okay. So when you think about it, for a weekday meal, when your pasta cooks, your minutes, so after it's done, your minutes away from serving. So it's a really quick and easy thing. I also think it's a great little pasta dish to um, have as a late night snack. I think that's lovely, or an afternoon snack, or a morning snack, or any snack. Um, but it definitely isn't a great dish to do for a crowd. In fact, there are some dip, there's some there are some really good cacio pepe videos out there, and there's a couple of cooks that have um, hacked kind of, uh, and it is by adding some other things to help stabilize the sauce. Um, so that you could cook it for a crowd. But for me, for me, this is just kind of, I don't know, cacio e pepe is kind of an intimate dish, meaning I just don't feel like it's a big crowd dish, right? Because you're, it's almost like when you make pancakes, right? You're making pancakes and then you're serving them and people are eating them, they're adding the butter and the maple syrup. You're not sitting there, you know, feeding a table of 20 or a table of 10 or even eight or six pancakes usually, right? It's usually unless that's your family size, then you are. But um, like we're, we were a family of four. So typically like that's where I was going with the cooking. So, um, but it is really yummy. And it's one of those dishes that you want to eat right away. So there's something really cool about that, that you know, not that I'm advising eating fast, although that is one of my issues. Um, but you know that like to really savor it, you got to get into it right away, which I think is really cool. All right, so let's see here. We'll let this go. So while this is cooking, I'm going to tell you a little bit about the other method. And I'm just going to get, just getting a timer going so I don't forget and not check the pasta. Because what I'm going to do is when it's a few minutes from being done, I'm going to get some of that water over here in the pan to get the pan warm. That was one technique that um, I didn't learn from the cooking show, The Chef in Italy. But I thought to myself, that was something Stephen talked about. And I imagine because in a restaurant kitchen, it's pretty hot. So I think all the pans, and then you got a pan near the stove, it's staying pretty warm. But in my kitchen, I don't have that kind of heat going. So I thought, you know what, that, that would be an advantage to help get that pot warm before I add the rest and everything you know, else to it. So, um, but the thing that's different is we'll be toasting the um, peppercorns first and seeing if that adds another nuance of flavor and then I will be grinding those. So actually let me get the rest of these peppercorns out. What I'm excited about is I've got all this pepper now ready for my future recipes the next week. Which is nice. Like oh you know what? I have these new bowls. Highly recommend. This was a Christmas present. Not as expensive as the pepper grinder, Chris, but these are just great little bowls from, I think, Libby, and they have lids, and they're great for just prep work, um, and then great just for storing small amounts of things. So I'm going to get that in there. So these are not toasted um, peppercorns, so I'm going to get that there. And these are the toasted peppercorns we're going to use for our sauce. I guess I can move this since the camera's not working. Check my pasta, just do a little twirl. So there is a place in Philly, um, actually, that I would say it's the place I most crave food. Um, it's called Fiorella, and it's uh, Mark Vitri, or Vetri, we never know how to say his name. Um, he's a big chef here, well, he's a big chef, period, but he's a big chef, especially here in the city, because he has quite a few places or has had a few places, and um, and he has a flagship restaurant, which is amazing that we've eaten at once and dropped a whole lot of money, but it was worth every penny. It was absolutely one of the most fabulous meals I've ever been at. But he's got a, a much more affordable place called Fiorella, and they put out some of the best pastas I've ever had. And they have a cacio e pepe. They do it with a tonarelli pasta, um, and my son is addicted to it. And it's just, he always has to get it. And what's nice is at that restaurant, when the pastas are ready, they bring it out. So it's not a place where everyone gets served their dinner all at the same time. You know, you put in your order and things come out as they're ready. So it's really meant to be shared. It's a wonderful place, casual and hard to get reservations at now because they opened up, I think, in the middle of the pandemic and a lot of people didn't know about it. Um, and they, that's when we started going to it. And now everyone knows about it. So now it's hard to get, but it is worth it. It is worth the effort. So let me see how much more time I've got. 
So um, in our next method, as I said, we're gonna toast some of the peppercorns first. We'll grind them. We will already have our cheese ready. So I will go get that other bit of pasta back in the pot after we um, taste the, the stuff we have now. In fact, one of the things I wanna do, Stephen also talked about warming a plate, which I thought was a great idea. Um, so I'm gonna do that. I talked about warming the plate in the microwave. I've never done that, to be honest. I don't know if you all have warmed your plates before. I talked, I've thought about like chilling glasses. My dad used to even chill plates. He makes an amazing Caesar salad. That's something I would love to do is, is have him on some time to uh, do his Caesar salad. If not, I might just have to do it myself or maybe he can do it remotely because I know I did um, a stream once with my niece and she's a vegetarian and we did some vegetarian dishes. She lives in Pittsburgh and so she joined via Zoom. So maybe my dad... Um, could kind of guide me through it too. So, um, so yeah, so I think we're all ready and now it's just a matter of letting this pasta get ready. So guys, what is, um, where did the bowls come from? Do you mean those little bowls? Chris, do you mean the little bowls like this, this bowl? Yes, his name is, his name's Chris. I mean, these bowls? So I'm not sure if that's what you mean. Yes, um, these were from Amazon, right? I think, because they were a Christmas present. I'm sure they were from Amazon. Hubby. I think so. Yeah, I bet you they're from Amazon. I think Libby makes them, and they came in eight. Eight of these with lids, and I just, yeah. I, I love them. They're great. They were uh, yeah, the lids are, the lids are great. You know, I mean, all of us are trying to use less plastic wrap, less spoil, and stuff like that, so it's just nice to, to have that. Let me check on my pasta. Oh, yeah. it's still a ways. Um, that stuff is so thick that you can tell just by touching it that it's not ready yet. Um, but in any event, so then uh, we will get that pepper ground while the pasta is cooking for the next batch. Um, and then we'll be ready to twirl with that and see. So Hubs, just so you know, because he's entered the room, he's on the other side of the camera. The first recipe I'm going to do is um, the way I've done it before. And then the second recipe I'm going to do is uh, this fella named Steven who does Not Your, Not Your Average Cooking Show. Um, he use, doesn't use butter. So I'm going to see how that is. And he, he says that's an, another way that they right. do it. I know. He says it's another way they do it authentically. No, apparently not. And I was just saying, I think just, you know, there's different different places and I'm wondering because I know there's certain parts of Italy I don't know Italy just the pasta water the cheese and the black pepper <laughs> the Italian in the room which he's not <laughs> he's getting really judgy about it so well we'll see I figure we'll try it we'll see and um, but I do know that there's certain parts of Italy where butter is used and there's certain parts of Italy where butter is not used and if I had Stanley Tucci here right now he could like enlighten us because we have watched his show which is an excellent show um, it's a great foodie show and as a typical person of my age I've completely forgotten all this detail so I'm at a loss but I do know there's certain parts of Italy that have certain kinds of food certain kinds of cheeses they use, meats, and all that, all this sort of thing. So anyways, let's see how we're doing. Well, what are, you know, this is, we're using the bucatini that we used for the pasta aglioleo. Little, little, little. What's that? Pasta aglioleo. You try it. <laughs> don't, I think he needs to get from behind the camera, don't you? He's looking fancy today. I'm not sure why he's looking fancy. I'm about to, I'm about to toss the cheese. I think you need to come back over here. Okay, yeah. I need so I'm gonna take a ladle. And my ladle is about I don't know, half cup, and get to my pot warm. There we go. And get that warm. Yeah, I can tell this is this isn't done. For Cacio Pepe, since we are literally whizzing it up in a minute. It's not like other sauces where you're gonna be cooking it when it goes to the other pan. So you really want your pasta to that perfect al dente spot. So this is way pre al dente. So you can tell like that. Pasta doesn't do that. <laughs> That's just pre al dente. 
It's kind of like a watched pot never boils, a watched pasta never cooks, right? But guys, what are some of your favorite pastas? Do you like, you know, because like for hominess, I love cacio e pepe, I love carbonara, Aglae Olio is the easiest one. I love that because it's so easy. How about you? Oh, he's an angel hair guy. Well, no. Ah. Yes, but, but thin spaghetti. You should come over here. They're not going to be able to hear you. Thin spaghetti is fun. He's feeling lazy. What drink are you drinking there, babe? Uh, an old fashioned. An old fashioned for an old fashioned? Thank you. You're welcome. I'm going to keep giving you a hard time until you get out, get over here. I'll even get you a chair. You'll give me a hard time when I get over there. He walked in on Mama being super stressed because the darn camera wasn't working. So I was not, <laughs> it was, well, I would say in our household, it's never like the 50s when he walks in the door. You know, I'm not rushing with him with a martini or something like that. Um, we both work and and we're just a modern couple, right? However, when he walked in today, he's like, how was your day? I'm like, I'm stressed. <laughs> My camera's not working. So that was fun. Yeah. All right. So if you're just joining us, we are about to do the technique for the cacio e pepe. We're going to do two methods to try. Each of the methods are short in nature for that great weekday meal. However, it'll take a little longer than the usual weekday stream because of the fact that we're going to do it two different ways and try it. Mm. I think this might not be a good idea. I feel like you're going to get some of the cacio pepe sauce splattered on that, and that's going to make you grumpy. Just saying. All right. So let's see. So if you're joining us, please be sure to say hi in the chat. We'd love to know if you're joining us. <laughs> He's doing his daily steal you want me from whatever here. ingredients. That's fine. I think you got a peppercorn on my cheese, though. Oh, sorry about that. That's yeah, okay. All right. We should be getting soon mm. here. That's good. Let's see how we're doing. Here, you can even try this. It's hot. I want it perfect. Oh, it's hot. Oh, it's almost there. Okay. So I'm going to turn that off, and I'm going to... So in this method, you actually use a little heat. In the second method, it doesn't use any heat. So I've got my, so this is what I'm so sorry that my camera's not working that y'all can't see. So um, I need my little knife. I'm going to be putting this butter melted. Is there anything I can do with no, the camera? No, but you can't. But the camera's not working. Right. Yeah, unfortunately. Thank you. The camera's just not working. So what I just did here is I have some pasta water and I have two small knobs of butter, probably about, probably about two and a half tablespoons of butter. And I'm letting that melt and I'm adding the pepper to that. I just want this to melt and I want it to simmer a little bit. And then I will be turning off the heat. You do not cook the pasta with the cheese on the heat. Um, but I just need this butter melted. So what I should have done when I instead of yammering is I should have put that butter in when I first put that ladle in. But you know, woulda, coulda, shoulda. What are you gonna do? So what's this pasta over here for? The second batch. Oh. So we'll let that go. And the the, the control freak is is uh, in me is kind of getting nervous now because I realized that I should have had that butter going, and. Um, now my pasta is going to be probably a little more cooked than I want it to be, but what are you going to do, right? Okay, so we're letting this come, we're letting that come to a, just like a melt and a little bit of a simmer. I just want to get those flavors infused. So again, this is what you could have done while the pasta was um, cooking and just set this aside, um, but I got too much into the conversation about cacio e pepe. So, oh. Where's the first time you had cacio de pepe? I don't matter at all remember. Yeah? No, I think the first time I had it was when I made it for you guys. I've never had it out except for here at, um. Fiorella? At Fiorella, yeah. Cool. And we had it at that Toscana place or whatever that one place was, but I've well, never Toscana been to Toscana over in, um. Nearby Rittenhouse. 
Okay, so everything's melted here. Oh, Grand here. Cafe, La Pira. Um, no, the uh, the one that via via La Costa. Oh, via La I'm Costa. Sorry. Got I, it. All right, so this is all set here. It's, oh, you can't even see. Oh my goodness, friends. Okay, you can see there. You pour butter on the computer. No, I'm really sorry, friends. All right, now I'm going to take my pasta. I'm going to use my bigger one actually. Put that in there. Do you use pasta water in this one too? Both. Okay. But the other one, you just use pasta water. Yes, the other one is just pasta water. So I have a job for you. Your okay. job is to, um, no, you don't, you actually can just sit down there. It's, it's better to just well, sit I'm down there. Stand no, because I'm going to be, all yeah. right, whatever. All right, I'll um, But uh, your job is, okay, so friends, I've got this pasta here. Your job is to win it boils to put that other pasta in. So it's got to stand up then. But it's not going to boil right now. So, mm. All right, so I've got my pasta in the pasta water here. I've taken it off the heat. And now what I'm going to do, and I'm going to need to do more of this, I think, is I'm just going to let it rain. And then I'm going to stir vigorously. You just flip, you just flip the... So if you, want to, if you want to move around, you can... Because you're flipping stuff. So cooking is messy. I don't think Hubs likes that cooking is messy. So you're vigorously, so what I'm doing is I'm vigorously tossing this around with that pasta water and the butter and the cheese pepper. and the pepper. And I can see that my sauce is not coming together, so I need to add some more cheese. But you might want to stay back. Oh my gosh, I think we're going to need all the cheese. So on this one, now I haven't done this in a while, my ratio is completely off, which is sad because it's not coming together the way I want it to. Right, and of course, I thank you, babe. And wait, I'm also going to get, oh, and then that happened. So this, okay, so this is what not to do. So, look what happened. This is called a cacio e pepe fail. And that is that my cheese did not disperse and it came together. So, don't do that. What I'm thinking happened is usually I think I didn't let the water come down enough and I think it was actually too hot. So the cheese all got together. So let me see if I can salvage it with this. Oh man, am I so sad? You want some cheese and pepper? Nope. Okay. So I'm gonna fix up the next one. You can tell I haven't made this in a while. Although I've made it like with quick ramen, not the not the really cheap ramen, that other ramen. This did not work as I wanted to. Oh friends, Philly Philly's a little sad. So I'm going to watch the heat. I just let it get too hot. Is that what it was? Yep. Because well, it could, it could, that it, it, you should stay back until I get it off. It should Ooh. just, it should become creamy and not stringy. That looks pretty. No. Yeah. I'm judgy on my stuff. Am I not judgy? You are judgy. Yeah. And this, no, it's that not, it's good. still not perfect. It's definitely not perfect. Okay. Maybe the next one will be better. Maybe this is why Steven's way is better. I mean, it's worked much better for our family, but the that other looks, way. I mean, I'm there's still, saying, but there's. Looks, I know, but that looks, that looks very, looks much more, much more creamy. Yeah, not happy. Okay, so this is the fail. This is my first real fail on my live stream, Doug. It's not a fail. It's a fail. It's a fail. It's my first fail. Okay, the good news is I'm trying the other method, so don't do the Philly Philly method. We're probably going to use Stevens method. All right. Okay. There we go. You know I'm a pain in the ass, and I would tease you if it was a fail. That is not a fail. No, he's too kind. He's a pain in the ass, but no, in the no. end, he's actually really kind. Okay, so let me just toss this. 
Let me set a timer. Can I take a bite? No, it's funny. You got it. You got to wait. Okay. Um, ugh, let's see. Go. There we go. Oh, and then we're going to get the plate warm. Okay. So, let me see here. Just a little bit of water. Yeah, it's such a bummer. I'm a little sad. So, what I what's nice to have is just it have it be saucy too, so you could have like an actual sauce there. Give me to grate some more cheese. Sure. That'd be great. That'd be great if you grate some more cheese, can but you, I need to be here because I'm going to be plating it. I know. Should I use this though? Yes. Okay. Yeah, you can move that washcloth out of the way. Okay, and we'll be tasting this in just a sec. Let's see how this went. Oh, it did warm it. So I put that in for, ooh, it got a little hot. I put this in for about, I don't know, 30, 40 seconds, and it warmed the plate. So now we're going to plate. And to plate it, this is really nice because what you can do is you can spoon up your pasta. Let me get it better. Like that. And then you can twirl. And then you can plate it. Whoop! A little runaway. And there you go. It looks good. And then on top, that little cheese. We put a little bit more pepper. We're gonna put. Actually, can you put a little cheese on there too, please? Kind of up above. There you go. Good. Oh, you're good. You're good. You're good. You got pepper. And now you need to come stop and try it. Let me show everyone first. All right. You can stop because I'm going to have you try it. Okay. All right. So here we go. Here is the Philly Philly way that had the fail, and I still was able to revive the fail, although I did waste a bit of cheese doing that, which makes me, makes me a little sad. But the proof is in the tasting. Okay. Let's taste. It's funny, as soon as I saw so it separating, creamy. I was like, oh. I was so like, oh, creamy now. That's a big ass bite. Oh my goodness. And that is. As good as it always is. Your your paranoia about it not turning out right is. I wasted unfounded. some. I wasted some cheese though, babe. You know. I don't know how that gets any better. <laughs> Honestly, I'm, I'm serious. Oh, thank you, Chris. Yeah, you know. Um, I, I, you know, cheese is a funny thing, and while this there's a lot that is super simple about this dish, there's, um, you know, one one little thing goes a little wrong, and and your whole dish kind of falls a bit apart. Now, the good news is, is we had plenty of cheese that we could just, um, you know redo take out the clumps and redo but i don't know like i i i think i think because i cook a lot like i'm just i know what i'm capable of and so shall watch out girly shelby wants that so put another clump there so i think because i know what i'm capable of when it doesn't work out and that is cooking cooking is you know it kind of what would what would you say? Like cooking has a mind of its own yeah, because but, you, but but the important part is that you save it, you know. What do you mean? You save it. Oh I no, mean, I know. Was... I used up a I might, we had we lost a lot of pecorino in in the saving of this dish. I think I should mention something about that, right? So I'm gonna clean up this pot, and you've got plenty. Yep, okay. and just leave both things there. 
Yeah, and come do some eating. Oh, no, nope. uh, no, I'd really rather you just leave it and let it congeal. I'm going to get this pot um, washed because we're going to need it for the second one. And I'm not going to have the same problem. We hope. <laughs> and so then he says, you hope. Right, I do hope. Oh, I hope. No, just that your stress level is... I know. I don't know why you were so so stressed. This is great. But it... it okay. We'll talk about that later. I was stressed because it, it the cheese all congealed. Like it didn't... You know, it all came into one ball. That's why I was stressed. Yeah, there you go. What's that? Can you read that out? Johnny Thunder says, in my honest opinion, did you already get that? No. What separates good cooks from cooks, what separates good cooks from cooks is good ones know what to do when the wheels come off. Well, that's true. Very true. That's true. They just oftentimes don't have to come off when you're on camera. <laughs> you're on camera. I mean, I will say, because it'll be almost a year live streaming, um, in like a month and a half. And for the most part, I've really, I've really enjoyed it. And it's such a great way to kind of immortalize my grandma's recipes. Um, I, have not, I have met some amazing people like both you and Greg um, on Twitter and I, this amazing food community that we have. And Oh, I just want to get a little bit of water to warm the pan. This time I'm not turning on the, um... You're going to help me eat all this, right? Yeah, but I'm talking right now. I might save mine for later. I might. I know you're supposed to eat this right away, but until I get this other batch cooked, Maybe look, I'll, ha I'll have one more. Well, this is what we had last. I thought, because remember I cooked half of it for a pasta agola? It like it's grew. I think it like expanded. I think the pasta expanded. You must have. Did it? But this yes, is tough for me. I will say I'm cooking a, is all about what you do when you fall down, right? I'm a, I'll let you go in first because I need to go in. Okay, I'm going to go in. Oh Can I go in? Yep. I'm a spin guy with a, with a spoon. I know that's not appropriate, but I really am. It's not appropriate, is it? You can do it if you want. Be you. You be you. I've learned how to do it on the plate, and then you don't need another utensil, which is nice. It's not as bad as cutting it. Yeah. <laughs> People just mm -hmm. cut their spaghetti. Mm. And I will say, as a child, you look at them as in, in like horror, like oh my god. And as a child, I was so excited when I learned how to spin spaghetti in a spoon because that was like a big deal. I didn't have to have it cut anymore. Like that was like huge, right? And then as an adult, I learned how to spin on the plate. Look at it like when we eat, use chopsticks. We use chopsticks. When we could easily use a fork, but we're using it to kind of honor, honor the history of the meal. But right? is that? So I guess that's the way it's supposed to be. It's supposed to be not. Need Italians spoon, right? don't use spoons. Okay. So, kind of like Metagon. Metagon. <laughs> What's Metagon? What's Metagon? I no, tell me. I don't know. No. So. Okay, this I gotta really respin. It is good. It's just not perfect. <laughs> mm. Don't be me. Don't be me. But also, I'm on camera, so you know. <clears throat> Have grace. <coughs> you were mm. so hard on yourself. For no reason, you're hard on yourself. I will say, I love it with bucatini. And this is more of an artisanal bucatini, so it's thicker. I have the timer on. It's thicker than others, and so it just has so much good mouthfeel. It's wonderful. Let's see okay. how this is doing. Oh yeah, this still way to go. What did you put on? Uh, just leave it. I'm gonna get the other plate warm. Can I continue to eat this? You can, I'll probably just eat more of the second one. So are you are you memorizing the taste of the butter? Because like this has butter in it. I know. No, I mean you got to kind of like set your brain to what this tastes like. Mm. 
Yeah, so we're doing a we're doing a comparison. Mm -hmm. we're doing okay. a comparison. All right. Well, then I'm gonna stop eating. So you want to put that over there, just so because we can finish it later. This clay is warm. This plate's ready to go. And then what I'll do is I'll still bring it over here to toss because we don't toss it on the heat. Anyway. So, what, so what are you going to do different with this one? This one you don't add butter. And no, I mean, but... So. Well, the other one, the way I had learned from the Italian chef was you simmered the pasta water with some pepper. And, oh my gosh, I totally forgot. I forgot something. Guess what? Okay, so we're not toasting the peppercorns. In the, I was all verklempt <laughs> from the problem with my seizing um, pecorino, and because of that, I didn't toast my peppercorns. I was eating the horror. So we're not going to be able to try to toast the peppercorns. Luckily, right, I've got plenty of pepper to use. Oh, so this is horrible. So Johnny says it's hard to watch y'all eat this because I am currently zero carbs. That's right. And have been since November. How's that going, by the way? Is, is it keto that you're doing? Oh, that is or just, Whole Foods? That is Whole Foods. By the okay. I meant um, Whole30. Wh which, are you, which are you doing? Horrible. Yeah, I'm sorry. You're Actually, I give you lots of credit oh, watching, to be God. honest. But I've seen some of the stuff you're cooking. You're cooking some yummy, some yummy things. I did Atkins for a while, and that was just absolutely brutal. So I'm adding the peppercorns to the water just so they can, you know, kind of get some, some of the flavor. We were supposed to toast them. And but I was chit chatting and all verklempt about like the, the issues, so that happened. Let's see if my pasta is ready. But yeah, so um, yeah, you have to let us know how it's going. It's blood sugar, blood blood, blood sugar, sugar issues. Yeah, just no carbs. Wow. Mm -hmm. Is it? Oh, is, it's perfect. Is she? Reads blood sugar issues as Amy stuffs a, a piece of pasta in her mouth. And I will say, um, you know, we <laughs> I luckily don't have blood sugar issues, but I am definitely a carboholic. In our house, we only cook for the carbs that we're planning on eating because if I cook more, they call my name. And that's just a horrible thing when they, Shelby, you need to get out because I don't want you to get hot water on you, girly. Okay, so now. I'm going to add the cheese. We've got the pepper in here, so I've so I've added no heat. The only heat in here was the original pasta water that warmed up the pan. Was the water clinging um, to the pasta? Um, I might just add a tad more because he adds more. There you go. And I can add a tad more. So I've got the pasta water here that I can add to. Like that isn't a problem. And now I'm going to add my cheese. So my temperature should be less here. But the main thing we're looking at is if there is a taste differential. Um, that was a fun job of grating the cheese. It was fun job. If there's a taste differential. And you know what? I'm going to use my tongs because I actually like my tongs. And they give me more control. It's like Janet Jackson's all about control. I love Janet, Miss Jackson, if you're nasty. And you know what? It is doing it again for the love of heat. It is doing it again. So it must still be too hot. I think it's just the heat. Right, but it's not supposed to. Okay, I gotta stop doing this, or, or my friends are gonna be like, enough with the noise and the bang bang. Yeah. You know, it's gonna be one of those days. The good news is, is that we are going to New York. And that'll be lovely. What are we doing there? We are, for his birthday, his birthday was in December. We are going there for a day. We're going to see Moulin Rouge. And, um, yeah. And then we're going to... Oh, and we're going out to a place that James Walker um, on Twitter had recommended called Tao's Cows. It's a sushi place. Yeah, so so this stream is to show you that don't do what I do. I mean, I'm telling you, I did a little short. Well, I don't know. So I don't know if you saw the short. I did a little short about Cacio Pepe. 
It was, I don't even know if you knew it because I probably kept it from him. It was an afternoon snack. Um, <laughs> and it was with some, not, it wasn't like the cheap ramen. It was just like nice ramen noodles. And anyways, and that came out beautifully because I wasn't streaming and I was videotaping it. And this is clumping like snow in the worst way. It is. Yeah, just a little disappointed. That looks pretty good. No, it doesn't. Italians would frown at me. They'd say, look at you, girl. What do you think you're doing? So, so th this is actually what I was thinking. And Johnny just said it. Could it be the cheese? Shouldn't it? This is the good cheese. I, but I'm, I mean, it's a great. What do you it's think? Great, Johnny, what do you think? What do you think's going on here? That's the exact same thing that I was thinking. My goodness. Maybe they maybe they sold me a bill of goods. Maybe this isn't really Pecorino Romano. <laughs> I'm joking because there is no way it's not Pecorino Romano. I mean, it was from our nearby River Wards. Um, you know, yeah, it's just great. Just great. Got the good stuff. I usually get what, it from ShopRite. What is wrong with that? I, I don't understand. Okay, so think of you. You've had it at um, you've had it at Fiorella. At Fiorella, it's yeah. a sauce. Okay. It's a sauce. And when that I've made it like before, no. It's just the curdles. The oh. cheese is curdling. No, okay. okay, so I know right. I hear you, but I'm just saying it's not that it's not edible. It's just that it doesn't have the texture. And I should have taken a picture of the other one because this one actually looks worse, to be honest. Like, how, how can it look worse? Oh, my Lord. Uh, so for any of you joining me for the first time, you came to my first fail. Welcome to Philly Philly. Welcome to Philly. too no, hot no. again. Welcome to Philly but it's Failey. it's been so long since I've done this, I have no idea. Welcome to Philly Failey. I mean, honestly, when we have made this before, it's literally, it's the fastest thing to make. It is awesome. Oh, my goodness. And I'm just trying to think what I, I'm going to try it because so it's absorbed the water. I'm going to a little more water. Whoopsie. Oh, such is the life of a home cook, right? Such is the life. I just wanted to, like, get more saucy. That's my, I mean, it's saucy. You can hear it. It's saucy. I'm just a little sad. Do you want me to get a plate? I have a plate right there. Okay. So, you know. Yeah, it's just, it looks like, it does not look pleasing to my eye. Not pleasing to mine. I know, but I'm the one that has to take you pictures. you got cheese all over you. I don't You're care. Like cheese comes stuff. out. Cheese comes out. This is a washing machine. That can handle all that. All right. Let's play that thing. People are going to, I just know there's going to be, it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. We all know what, when women say fine, we know what that means, by so, the way. It means it's not fine. It means it's not fine. Wait, I got to do that better. Yeah, it looks horrible. You're, he just wants me to make sure I don't kick him out. So he's going to say everything nice to me, right? I think. Let's see. Okay. I'm going to have to do a different one for Can I get a fork? I think we have forks. Don't we have forks? Right. Oh, yes. All right. This is the second one. Oh, let's oh, see. Boy. <laughs> Almost lost the pasta. You can tell Philly Philly's getting a little this bit yours. Philly frenzy. My goodness. Oh, right. sweetie. So I might gonna, have to do a part two so we're gonna of Cacio Pepe. See which one we like best, right? Yeah, I know which one I like best. One I made like a month ago. Oh, I like the butter better. It's very, very good. It's good, but the butter is better. So I'm just going to say. The first one? Yeah. Yeah, it is. This isn't this, bad. This is, this is really good. This, this is really this good. Is very good. Then I would... But I do like the butter better. So if I got this out at a restaurant, I would be very happy. But the first one is just decadent. Yeah. And and you see, I didn't use, for the amount of pasta I made, I used like two tablespoons of butter. <laughs> I give you so much credit for watching us eat pasta cheese. That's just... Oh, man. 
So this is, I mean, this I really, good. I really like this. It's actually the only thing about it is that's that's different. It's actually, which I guess this makes is sense. It's pepperier. It's pepper, but it, it has more like, pepper. No, but I added the same. But it's it's kind of lighter because of the lack of the butter. I like the butter. So it's easier to eat, but that I like that one better. Why is it easier to eat? Because it's not as heavy because of the, <gasps> because of the butter. Put, we didn't put extra cheese on there. So you, you don't need extra cheese. <laughs> um, I do like the but. I mean, this is tasty. I do like the butter better. And since oh, it, it just adds a good bite. It just adds like a little something, a little nuance to it. Because it's not like you taste the butter, but it does add creaminess to it. No. All right. Okay. This is my last bite. I'm done. Oh, well, so even at the end of the day, if you throw together some butter, some pecorino, and some pepper, it's good stuff. It's good stuff. Um, yeah. And you can tell that this was a <laughs> difficult I got thing. I got full into it. <laughs> I'm wearing my food. <laughs> Get I do. Oh my! I've got it everywhere, and the dog is just like she's back and forth going. That's why she's. That's she's why like, the oh, dog won't it's leave. Dropping off just dropping pecorino. Absolutely, all absolutely. But thank you so much. Thank you, Chris. Thank you, Greg. Thank you, anyone else who's watching the stream, and um, thank you, thank you for being with me when I failed. Let's sign off and eat. And uh, yeah, so we'll we'll sign up and we're gonna take pictures. Um, try try to take pictures. But I hope y'all have a great weekend. Um, I don't have my next date up yet. I'm in the. I was last night working on my schedule for February, so I'll be dropping that schedule soon. So be on the look for, look out for that. I'll make sure it goes on my YouTube channel on about, and I'll also make sure that it is on my Twitter. So if you're not for by the way, please even amidst the fail, please like and subscribe and share. Um, I appreciate you so much. And if you want to know everything that's going on, please make sure and follow me on Twitter at Philly Philly Live. And to all of my foodie friends, just thank you so much. I really appreciate you guys. I learned from you. And until we eat again, see you later. Oh, there it is. <laughs>